overpopulated cities around the world have caused people to become a greedy, selfish, and litigious society. Would you like to be happier, live longer, never be forgotten, and help make the world a kinder, more civil place? It's actually easier than you think. Every day you're asked, how are you? Instead of saying good, say I am fantastic. It will make you look better, feel great, and reduce your stress. Making the world a better place starts with each person. Please join the Be Fantastic movement today. What you want to be, you can be. Be fantastic. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another fantastic interview. I've got Carl here, and we're cruising north on PCH. It's a beautiful day. I always say it's a beautiful day to be on the top side of the grass. Yes, definitely. Right? Definitely. Because um, I know a lot of people underneath the grass right now. Right. But um, So you're heading to work. Um, we're going to go over the beautiful Malibu Canyon. And you are, you've are you studied history, or you, well, that yep. was your major? That was my major in college, yes. So he actually guessed, uh, with a couple hints, where How Are You comes from. So how are you, Carl? I'm fantastic. There you go. <laughs> He's already fantastic. He's a smart man, and he, he, he gets it. It's more, when you go into a business meeting, and they say, how are you? And you say you're fantastic, you put a whole energy into the meeting. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every time you say it, you're going to live longer and make other people happy. By the way, see this bridge right here? Yes. Uh, Oh, oh, just yes. before the bridge, there's a piece of property there. It's probably worth about $5 million. A friend of mine owns it. There's no house on it. Yeah. Wow. And look at the view, right? Yeah. So this nice. is where I motivate people. One of my, uh, when I have oh, really? successes. Oh, wow. But there's two lounge chairs underneath the tree. So imagine me motivating you under that, that tree. That's pretty Looking nice. over the ocean. Yeah, right? that's great. So that's kind of a fantastic one. Another place I like to do it is um, at Bluffs Park in Malibu. And where, um, I'm a Malibu Canyon and the PCH meet. Yep. There's a there's a chair there that's. A I shape, know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. The chair that um, a bench that's in the shape of a, a whale's tail, huh. which is pretty cool. And that's very motivational. So you were about to tell me something. So what I was about, what I was about to tell you was, um, you were talking about stress and uh, and uh, you were talking about stress being um, a negative emotion and how saying I I feel fantastic or I'm fantastic is a way to. Uh, Kind of counteract stress, right? And I was saying, um, just like many other things, the root of stress is actually archaic as well. And um, the reason it's archaic is because uh, stress originally was a was um, inculcated in humans as part of fight or flight when you were trying to get away from animals that were going to be attacking you and potentially eating you. Um, and so the human body actually responds well to um, short periods of bursts of stress. But long-term stress, the human body really responds poorly to biologically, and that's what causes high blood pressure and things like that. Well, the reason why, or it is one of the causes high blood pressure, the reason why um, uh, chronic stress is such a problem now is because, unlike in the past, we don't have animals chasing us around every once in a while. We have consistent things that we view as a threatening uh, as a threat to our well-being, whether it's in business or any other line of work. And so fighting stress actively is much, much harder now to do uh, than it was, and it's much more detrimental to your health than it was um, way back in the days of the Stone Age and, and uh, before modern humans. So that's where it comes from. That's fascinating. Why do you think short stress um, stress is good? Do you think because the adrenaline's running? Or, or yeah, well, you need to be able to, to have you know something that sort of kicks you into action, you know, uh, or else you would get eaten. So it biologically it makes total sense why humans need to be able to react into your point, sets off adrenaline and other things in order to, to um, force sort of a bias for action. But that, uh, um, you know, that bias for action, if it's a consistent thing that you're constantly dealing with, you know, uh, 15 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, your body can't handle that. You know, I tell people, and of course, uh, I'm not a schooled doctor. Um, I'm the doctor of life, so to speak. They gave me that the, the acronym or the nickname because I just gave you the prescription for a happier and longer life. Mm -hmm. And that's eliminating, eliminating the word good from your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Don't tell people to have a good day. Yeah. Or that was a really good meeting. Mm -hmm. That was a fantastic meeting. Mm -hmm. Have a fantastic day. You look fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So it's just it's a magical word. And it's not a word. It's an energy. Mm -hmm. Okay? But um, as far as stress goes... I, um, I tell people, of course, it's all your fault. Look at that stressful situation as 
in the future. Is it going to be important five minutes? Right. Five hours, five days, five weeks, five months, or in your lifetime? And I think typically the answer is always going to be no. Yeah. So, yep. is a relationship stressful? It's probably not healthy to be in it, and you might want to consider going on and moving mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Is your job stressful? Are they expecting more than is reasonable from you? Because all you can do is your best. Right. And I tell people, if your best isn't good enough for them, quit. You're probably yep. going to raise. Yep. Because they need you. But mm -hmm. they're putting a new stress on you. So get a different job. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are making a lot of money, and they realize that money's not the answer. So they quit and they become an artist. Or mm -hmm. they go surfing, you know, for the rest of their lives. Right. Because you are your own movie, you know, mm -hmm. Carl. I always tell people this. You're the star of a movie called Carl. You're not only the star of that movie, but you're the director, producer, and screenwriter. And every day in your life is a different scene in your movie. You're now in Monty's movie, and I'm in your movie. Mm -hmm. You need to make those scenes fun, exciting, adventurous, educational, motivational, inspirational. And you said yes to an interview, so you're having a new experience today. Yeah. You're growing. You, you know, uh, I'm going to teach you a thing or two, and you're going to teach me a thing or two, which you already have done. Yeah. And we're teaching nice our audience yeah. a thing or two. It's about sure. the more experience you have, the more knowledge you have, the easier life is. Mm -hmm. I've done 80, I'm sorry, I can't even remember the number, 98 different things in my life. Wow. And the 98th was Santa Claus. Wow. Everybody, you guys seen this before. Santa was one of the most rewarding endeavors because I brought such joy to children. Mm -hmm. I gave them such joy. I felt like God. Mm -hmm. They looked at me like I was God mm -hmm. with love and, and admiration and adoration and all that good stuff. But getting back to stress, now fight, what do you know, fight or flight? I mean, my sister told me this, she's a counselor for 35 years, um, and because I was very, very poor, we were, uh, you know, as, uh, we lived without any water, electricity, wow. our parents were beatniks, so I have a fight or flight syndrome in me, I guess, and uh -huh. everyone does, right? Yep. What do you, what's your theory about that, and, and explain a little further for People um, don't know about fight or flight. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm no expert on it, but um, I guess my sort of layman's kind of description of it would be when you're in a situation uh, where you feel personally threatened, you, the human mind tends to go to two things. One is to fight it, and the other one is to flee it, so to, to run away from it. So, you know, in the case of, you know, say you have a, you know, vicious animal looking to attack you, if your choice is to fight the animal or to run away from it, um, it's one of those two choices. You don't, you don't have, you know, really any other options. And so, um, it's, it's how you mentally make the kind of calculus to, to do one of the two. I wonder um, how that defines a person's personality. Would the A type fight it and, and kill it? Or, yeah. and, or, and the B type, I think there's A and B types, right? Yeah, Would yeah. run away. I mean, I tell people, don't let circumstances out of your control affect you. A drunk person... You know, you bump into them, you get a bar fight, and you break your nose. I mean, what the sense is that? So flight, for that instance, would be ignore that guy. He's drunk, yeah. he's out of, you know, or he's rude or whatever. So I think flight, in a lot of instances, isn't necessarily fear. It's just logical. Yeah. Right? So let me give you an example of that. Okay. So a few years ago, I was going for a run in a forest up in northern Minnesota. And um, I was like four miles into my run. And uh, I come up this hill and I run into a timber wolf. And if you've ever seen a timber wolf, they're like 140 pounds, they're huge. They cannot be confused with a dog. And they're vicious. And I stopped and I was probably 30 yards from this timber wolf. And it was just sitting there staring at me. Eye to eye, you guys. Eye to eye. And I was, in my own mind, freaking out. Like, what do I do? I'm definitely not gonna charge it. Um, but do I run away? Do I try to climb a tree? You know, what are my options? I really didn't have many options, but the thing that dawned on me, um, given how ill-prepared I one is I was totally ill-prepared for the situation. Like, that's not smart. But secondly was, um, well, Timberwolves are basically big dogs. And if you run to a, a big dog, what do you do? Well, you keep eye contact and you slowly walk backwards until you get far enough away that you're safe. And so I started doing that, and it just kept staring at me, and I kept walking back further and further, and I got about a quarter of a mile away from it, and then I turned around and started running. <laughs> and um, I uh, ran into a guy down the road that had a pickup truck on his truck, and, um, and uh, he had dropped me off at the place I was staying, and I looked, the first thing I did was I looked up online, what do you do if you run into a timber wolf? And the answer is, stare it in his eyes and slowly walk backwards. 
which I'm think thankfully is pure luck that I got that right. But um, but to your point, that was you know fleeing was the only option that made any logical sense in that scenario. Um, I wasn't gonna fight it, um, and I found out that actually that timber wolf had cubs, and so if I had tried to fight it, uh, it would have absolutely attacked me. And they're known to attack humans. Um, and they can run 40 miles an hour, so yeah, there's yeah. no way I was going to be able to... I, I think running is, is, in my opinion, you know, um, is the wrong thing because the, now they think you're, they're, you're, they're stronger than you, yep. and now you're prey. Yep. My thing is, when you guys connected eyes, yep. and I don't know if you have pets or not, a dog, mm-hmm. but yep. a dog will look at you and know you'll know that they got in trouble, they did something wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah. telepathy. Again, yep. we're getting back to telepathy. Yep. So by you connecting eyes and having the audacity to stare down the animal Mm -hmm. and maybe even walk towards it saying I'm better than you Mm -hmm. Uh, and they don't get that feeling yeah it's probably an adrenaline it's it's telepathy yep yep Um, because I as a young boy I never had fear and the bigger the the football player in high school I look in their eyes and say you know I just stare them down Mm -hmm. they knew they could kick the living shit out of me Mm -hmm. but because I stared them down with confidence Mm -hmm. I won the battles Mm. So yep. to me, again, if aliens come to the, uh, the, the planet and they've been here before and they're still here, they're not going to speak English yeah, right. or French mm-hmm. or Chinese. They're going to uh, communicate with us telepathically. And so, again, it's the oh, – I tell people in, um, in relationships, when you look at – did you fall in love at the first sight with your girl um, or guy, whatever it is? Gr- girl. girl, but uh, I, I was pretty – Infatuated. Okay, infatuation. Yeah. So I tell people when you first connect eyes, as a man, do not look away first. As women want a guy who's stronger than them. Mm. If you look away first, you're not as strong as them. Huh. And if you don't stop looking in each other's eyes, you're falling in love. Mm-hmm. And she goes, "He's not looking away. She obviously yeah. is attracted. You're not looking away. Right. Do not look away." Huh. And the, I don't know. Are you not single, right? No. Okay. And I tell the young people out there listening, the best opening line on the planet, because. In a relationship, you want someone who's confident and who's funny. Mm-hmm. The two most important elements mm-hmm. in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I tell people, say, when someone says hello for the first time and they say, how are you? Look them in the eyes and say, I am fan-fucking-tastic. <laughs> it's the best line on the planet. Mm-hmm. See how you laughed? Yeah. And if they take offense to it, they don't want to be with them in the first place. That's because true. that means they don't have a sense of humor. Right, right. right? Yep. That is the... And in, in, in a business relationship, too. If you say, you walk into a meeting, they say, how are you? I am fan and fucking, they're all gonna say, "My, I want to do business with this guy." Yeah, yeah. He's confident. He's funny. He's he's got a personality. Mm-hmm. You know. And yeah. if they take offense to it, it's not a cuss word because it's in the middle of the word. If you were to say, <laughs> "I am," if you were to say, "I am fucking fantastic," you just curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that doesn't even sound good. But fan fucking fantastic, it sounds fantastic, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, as a philosopher, I've got lots of philosophies, lots of them. Um, actually, everybody listening. Everyone needs motivation. I motivate people in, in three minutes or less when they get in this car, and it makes me feel fantastic to do that. This morning was a girl who goes to NAM, I think it was called NAM Yoga, every day for two hours to build her confidence, to build you know, her mind. It's all about the mind again, yeah, right? Yeah. And when she heard me, what I'm doing, she was flabbergasted. Huh. And she'll be part of the movement. Cool. Because these people out there that need motivation, that need to be to know that, you know, the, the affirmations, dude, you're good, you're fantastic, you're, you're beautiful, you're healthy, you're yeah, yeah. successful. These are affirmations that people need to say. So I'm st- everyone listening, I'm starting a call-in line for people that need some motivation, inspiration, advice, counseling. And basically, for $2 a minute, they can, I'll give them the answers. Actually, I already have it uh, on my website, an app, where they, it's called Ask Dr. Fantastic Anything. Pretty much... Because of my all my trades and the uh, world travel and being a grandfather, I have a lot of answers. And they're my opinions, of course, yeah. but they're a general consensus because of the 100 billion people that lived on the planet so far, they didn't have any, there's no new questions. Mm-hmm. It's what is happiness, what is life about, what is, how can I be successful, what can I do in relationships? There's no new questions, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So knowing that, there's... Actually, there's some new answers because we're learning, yeah, we're yeah. growing yep. as a species. You know, we know that to, to smoke, that's yeah. not too healthy. Yeah. We know that that waste is bad. You know, to, to reuse things is probably smarter. My sister's got, she's called Green Girl, and she has a service that's free where you can, if you're throwing a party, she'll give you all the plates and, and all the stuff you need so not to throw away 
all, all the, <coughs> the refuse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. There's yeah. a lot of people doing good out there. Um, and unfortunately, let me ask you a question. I ask this of everybody. Have you ever met someone in your entire life that when you ask them how they are, they say they're fantastic? Think back in high school, think uh, back in your life. Maybe at some point, but not, I mean, I, I can't put my finger on it any time. So that means the answer is no. Because when you, you never forget someone, even if it's once in passing at an airport, then when you say, how are you, and they, and when they say they're fantastic, you never forget them. And the reason I say that, because I've asked this of 5,000 people so far, and 101 of them have said yes, and they know exactly who it was, hmm. even if it's 50 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So one of the things I say when you become a fantastic person in this movement, you'll live longer, feel better, look better, and never be forgotten. And I think if you're a businessman, as you said you are, you don't want someone to forget you. Right. And so it's, it's a good business. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a salesman. I'm probably one of the best salesmen on the planet. Well, actually, I am the best salesman on the planet because there's only one of me. Mm -hmm. Now, I could sell your product probably better than anyone because I'm not selling your product. I'm selling a relationship. Mm -hmm. Salesmanship is a relationship. It's, uh, it's not a product or a service. It's them looking forward to dealing with you mm -hmm. and buying what you have to sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of business are you in? Uh, as an example. Musical instruments. Musical instruments. Yeah. That's fantastic. You sell musical instruments? Uh, I do. Really? Yep. Everything? Uh, guitars and drum sets and keyboards and... Really? Um, yeah. And uh, DJ equipment and stuff like that. That is fantastic. Speakers, yeah. Now, NAM is going on this week, isn't it? It sure is. I'm going oh, down there this afternoon. Going down there this afternoon? <laughs> yeah. I actually... Um, uh, I have an opportunity to go down there. I'm not sure if I'm going to or not, but that's that's the convention. You have a booth down there? Uh, nope. We're walking around checking out booths. Now, do you have a, a website that you want to shout out to the people that want to buy a drum set? Sure. Guitarcenter.com. You're a guitar center? I am. Yeah. What do you do for them? Uh, I'm the executive vice president for merchandising. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Is there a lot of people in the company? Uh, yeah. We have uh, 6,500 people. So oh, oh only 6,500? Yeah. Now... Do you have an influence over the company? You must have because you're yeah, executive. I, so. yeah. I think every salesperson at every guitar center, how many guitar centers are there, by the way? About 300. 300. Every salesperson at the end of a sale or even on a greeting, at the end of the sale, they should certainly say, have a fantastic day. Yeah. That changes the whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a bank manager that says, has all their tellers at the end of the transaction say have a fantastic day hmm. that makes them feel better yeah I have 13 teachers that before class or having the entire classroom say I am fantastic in unison which builds a great energy to the um, yeah. to the, the class mm -hmm. it builds the, the children's self-confidence and um, it builds their um, what do you call it uh, self-esteem yeah yeah and I am in, involved in this organization and everybody, he's reading a pamphlet called The Mother of Humanity Monument, which is going up in Africa. The, the country of Cameroon is dedicating, is donating 3,000 acres to the, to the project. And the reason I'm involved is because the mothers of the world, this is celebrating motherhood, uh -huh. need to tell their children to be fantastic yeah. instead of be good. Yeah. And again, it's the 600 year old question that means nothing today, but we can't change the question. Let's change the answer. And the movement, as you can see by the B, is pollinating positivity and cultivating civility. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you, uh, we're going to be friends, because I just hopefully changed your life a little bit, yeah. opened up your eyes a little bit. I'm doing concerts. Okay. I'm doing um, motivational meetings once a month. And this year, I'm going to show you in a minute, a fantastic trophy that I've designed from the guy who created this, mm. and he's making it right now. And imagine a 13-inch statuette mm -hmm. of a man and a woman embracing, okay. and, and, and each one of their arms uh, in front of them is a globe of the world. Mm. So they're cradling the earth, mm -hmm. and that's pollinating positivity, representing pollinating positivity and cultivating civility. They're standing atop, it's a bronze statue, mm -hmm. gold-plated, and they're standing atop a three-tier pyramid, step pyramid, strongest structure in the world so you symbolize the strength yep so this statue is going to be given to fantastic human beings once a year in our ceremony wow. fantastic humanitarian fantastic visionary fantastic um, 
businessman, fantastic um, environmentalist, a, a fantastic activist, people that are helping shape the world mm -hmm. in a fantastic manner. Mm -hmm. Because um, on my app, this is the Be Fantastic app, I want to represent and present to people fantastic products, fantastic services, fantastic people, because it's an app for fantastic people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Guitar Center, my God, that's huge. You guys are huge. And you guys, the companies like that, and that's why I'm inviting John Paul DeGioia and Barry Gordy and Elon Musk to this event to receive an award because they can shape the world by encouraging their employees to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. This needs to spread to all the countries of the world. Yeah, yeah. Because we all, uh, every city breeds greedy, selfish, litigious people. And because it's too crowded. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, just because it's crowded doesn't mean you shouldn't be accountable for your actions. People will pass me, because there's a space here in front of us. Mm -hmm. They'll pass me to get into that space, which is two seconds mm -hmm. in front of me. Risk their life. They're breaking the law because they're yep. going over the line. Yep. And they're risking an accident. Mm -hmm. They're risking their life for two seconds. They're rushing to red lights. Do you know you don't get to your destination any sooner by getting to the red light quicker? That's true. They yeah. speed to red lights. Mm -hmm. they're, and that costs money and gas. Yep. It's polluting the planet. Yep. And it's wearing your brakes out. And it's doing nothing for anybody. So, you know, I, I, I drive limousines. I drive yachts. I drive mm -hmm. a, my wife crazy. I drive a lot of different things. <laughs> But I'm having so much fun in life combining the 98 professions into a movement that can help the world. Because I've always wanted to help the world. I have two charities, one for veterans, ilovesswest.org, where you as a company, if you wanted to give discounts to veterans, hmm. which I encourage you to do, okay. it's free to join. You list your 6,500 locations, and a veteran clicks on the... Um, uh, he puts a, a geo search in to find out who's giving him discounts in his area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether it be of a product, um, dining, which is really big, or um, a place to stay. And what that does for your company, one, is it thanks our veterans every day, not twice a year. Mm -hmm. Two, is it increases your business. Is a veteran going to go to you if he gets a 5% or 2% or 1% discount on a drum set or another company? Mm -hmm. It's going to go to you. So it's increasing your business. It's earning your customer loyalty. Because they, people want to know that you're thanking their veterans, mm -hmm. and veterans are, of course, going to love you and recommend you to others because you're helping them with a discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it spreads patriotism. Mm -hmm. And you have 6,500 companies or stores that could be doing that mm -hmm. for free. I don't. I used to charge um, $100 to be listed, but because now it's automatic, I don't have to charge anybody. Mm -hmm. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on this site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and now all you do is uh, upload your image, your logo, your website, your discount, um, I think there's three discounts. One is gold, which is 10%, which most restaurants do. Some do 20%. Uh, then there's silver, which is 5% or more. 10% or more, 5% or more. And then there's bronze, which is varying discounts. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which So that means everyone could afford to be a member. Huh. One is free, and two, it brings your business. Hmm. You like that? Yeah. It's so that's one of my charities. Uh -huh. The other one is um, the Foundation for World Harmony which I was, uh, was created when I came up with the uh, concept of We Are the World back in the 80s. And that's a 501c3 that's going to back up all charities, but mostly right now. Hmm. So we're going to have, I'd love you to be a sponsor one day, maybe at one of our concerts, hmm. maybe uh, one of our motivational events, maybe the award show. Because you have you know, a fantastic company. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a guitar center, are you kidding me? Yeah. That's, even I know that, and I don't play instruments. Huh. Well, it's fantastic awesome. to meet you, Carl. Nice to meet you as well. And um, so, getting back to, so you were going to a meeting to, to one of your vendors? Going, no, I'm going to work. Um, oh, is then, that where Guitar Center yep, is? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the corporate headquarters? Yep. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. And then uh, going from there down to NAM, uh, down in Anaheim. Okay. So, yeah. That'll be fun. I love going to NAM. I love conventions. I've never been to NAM before. So oh, you've never been to NAM? Yeah, I've time. been yeah. many times. A CES, I love CES. I was there last week. Yeah. Were oh, you there? No, I didn't go this year. Yeah. Um, but I was going, going to, but I didn't. Have a ticket. I always like to yeah. have a ticket. I, I'm a pretty good at crashing, but and then the Cannes <laughs> Film Festival. Have you ever been to oh, that? I've never been to that. You have to go there. It is the party on the planet for two wow. weeks. Wow! It's the most. Imagine the best party you've ever been to, and multiply that by ten. The wow. best food, the best entertainment, the best venues, castles, yachts. Awesome! Uh, it's awesome. It's it's. I don't know how people survive it. <laughs> uh, I survived it for nine years. Wow! Uh, survived it. I mean, it was the time of my life. It's fantastic. You have, you are 
again, your movie. You have to make every scene fantastic. It's true. Like, yeah. this is a pretty fantastic uh, yeah, ride yeah. we're having, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, the next scene is in your office. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to you because no one's going to write your story. You know, and yep. you, you, you want to have a fantastic life. Do you have children? Uh, I do. How many children? Two. What ages? Twelve and eight. You every night you sit down for dinner, hopefully. Um, try to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very important to do that. Yeah. Very, very important to do that. Um, and you need to start indoctrinating them on not saying the word good. Get mm -hmm. rid of that word because they're going to stand out from their peers. I tell a lot of actors and actresses: you go into an audition, ninety-nine out of hundred are going to say they're good. When someone says, "How are you?" Watch what happens when you say you're fantastic. Do you want to hire a good actor or do you want to hire a fantastic actor? That's true. You yeah. want to buy good instruments or fantastic instruments? Yep. Mm -hmm. Guitar Center has to be fantastic. Yep. Right? True. Yep. It makes sense. Yep. All this makes sense. But people don't see the light. They have blinders on. They're, you know, and I'm on, uh, you and I are going to help make the world a better place by telling people that there's a better way. Makes, makes sense? total sense. Are we going left at Lost Hills? I'll just take a left here, yeah, probably. So everybody, I want to thank everyone for listening in. Carl and I are now uh, good friends, new friends. And with his help and on many others out there listening, we're going to make the world a better place. We're going to make the world a more civil place. The corporations aren't going to make it happen, but can. They can, the yep. Governments are certainly not going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. By the way, I never taught politics or religion mm -hmm. On, mm -hmm. on all my interviews. That's pretty smart. <laughs> because no one knows what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't know po politically what's going on. And it's the money that's making all the um, the media. Yeah. Right? Because the, the, you know, they're controlling the governments. They're controlling the media, the banks, everything. So they have their own agenda. So they don't want us to know about aliens or about extinction level events that are going on. But uh, again, we, you and I, and your, your employees need to be civil, kind to one another, considerate, friendly, polite. Say please and thank you. Say hello when someone says hello back. You know how often people don't say hello back? Huh, yeah, I guess it makes sense. It's, yeah. They don't do it. It's, it's my wife drives my wife crazy. She goes on these walks and she'll say hello to people and it really depresses her after when they don't say hello back. Yeah. What's the deal with that? People like, say hello back. You know, be kind to one another. Yeah. At any rate, so this is the um I, I created this bumper sticker, by the way. Uh -huh. I've got one for you if you want. Okay. But um, because I was interviewing a girl from Brazil, and she said there's a bunch of bumper stickers in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, where I used to be a Portuguese dubber. Um, that was one, one of the 98. One of the 98. <laughs> I made millions of dollars as a Portuguese dubber for Fox. But um, wow. she said the, the, the sticker says, be kinder. That's all it says, be kinder. And that's what Be Fantastic is, is being kind. Yeah, yeah. Considerate, friendly, polite, and civil. And we could all do it. And when it happens, uh, I'm hoping five years from now, in the big cities of the world, people are letting everyone in, and you're going to say Monty pulled it off. <laughs> now, this awesome. is something you want to be involved with. This is a three billion dollar project that I'm Jeez. helping raise the wow. money for, um, and I'm very happy to be part of that. And of course, Nigel's the one. That, wait, till you see my trophy for the fantastic award. It's going to blow your mind. Guess what? It's fantastic. <laughs> Everybody, if you like what you heard today, take it to heart. Be kind to one another. Be civil, be fantastic, like, share, subscribe. The 31st, January, is my next motivational meeting. Uh, January 21 is my next radio show. Uh, it's on the app. It's uh, um, healthylife.net. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Gotta say, I am fantastic. La, la, la.